I want to talk about another substance painter tip and this one is no great mystery uh, but it could be helpful now we've got a sort of a block mesh of a what could be a brick wall let's say and I've already baked the mesh maps and if you come over here and you look at the normal there's nothing on here that would represent bricks or any other you know, structure now if I was to come in here and just grab any smart material and throw it on you can see that there's an effect here where we've got the curvature uh, the edges and stuff like that there's nothing else I mean, this is just a flat surface now uh, because this is built into the geometry when I bake the mesh maps it created the maps to allow the smart material to know where to interact with it now if I was to come over here and just make a paint layer and let's say we come down here and uh, let's say we use height and I say I decrease the height and I come to my alphas and I just search for anything I'll just do lines and I'll grab these all right if I was to take that and just stamp that in there you can see that that goes in but the smart material has no interaction with that so it, it looks really kind of fake right and so this is where uh, people tend to use anchor points now if I just call this say alpha and I've done this in quite a few videos. If I add an anchor point, it'll get the name of the layer. Now, I need to take this, think of an anchor as the thing that goes below the ship. All right, I'm going to take this, I'm going to drag this down below the generator that creates this effect. All right, so if I put it down there, and then I come to this, and come to the generator. In the generator, I can come down to micro details. And because this was an alpha, not a normal, I can turn on micro height. Oh, make sure that's true all right it was already set as true and then come down to here choose the anchor point and then switch this channel to height and now I get some of the alpha some of the sort of some of the smart material effects on there and then you can adjust levels and stuff and it starts to become more realistic as if it's supposed to be there that's all good you can use an anchor point to sort of help find the edges and, and the grooves of this thing um, but let's take this now and let's say we wanted to make a brick wall and we're not going to use alphas and sort of paint in all of the bricks with height we're going to use like a uh, a brick generator and so i'm going to build this up let's see we're going to use um I'll throw down concrete simple on there and up here we're going to add a fill layer and we're going to use color and height, let's say, maybe roughness. Let's give this a, just a typical brick kind of color. Actually, I, I'm, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to bring the height up and bring the, that up. I'm going to throw something else in here. I'll do that in a moment. Uh, let's put on a black mask and let's use a fill. And let's say for this one, we'll use the tile, the tile generator. And uh, we'll start to get this. And I think I'm going to go with square and take the pattern, scale down. We start to see that going on. We can put this on triplanar and then we can uh, change the pattern here. Uh, let's go with maybe 10. Let's try and my 20 and just just to get something in there and the offset now will set to 0 0.5 and you know we're starting to get some some bricks all right uh okay now the next thing i want to do is i want to come back here to this base color and i'm actually going to find i'm going to search for rock and i'm going to take this this is just a, a texture uh and a rock face i'm going to throw that in just it'll give it just a different a different look to this okay so like that all right so we have that underneath there and we can put it on however we want now um, I can in here this is our bricks in the brick in the it's I got the tile generator here I can add um, filters above this to affect the bricks still I can do the typical you know blur slope type thing uh, I'll put that on min 
and I'll switch this to maybe 100 and drag the intensity up a bit you can start to get some sort of chipping but the bricks look very um, they look flat and basically what we don't have is any ability to other than what I just did and there might be another filter that could sort of help out but we can't really do anything to the edges I can't put a, a highlight like you'll often see uh, in substance designer and so what we can do is we can convert this height information into normal information and do a couple manipulations and then we can use smart materials that will affect the edges or we could use curvature uh, or the edge edgeware uh, generator to do something to those edges so uh, th that's kind of what I want to show you and so I'm going to uh, let's see will I leave that on doesn't really matter now to set this up all right we've got the height right here we've got it at one and let me just double check if I want to uh, change this a little bit just to have a little bit more room so we can see the crevices so it looks like we've got some height okay uh, it's not bad if you want to use it as a dungeon wall but again if we want to do some other effects on this especially on the edges we need this in the normal map and so what we're going to do is we're going to add a filter but I'm not going to add it onto the black mask if I try you'll see it doesn't work here I'm going to add filter and the one we want is this height to normal okay, if I click that the filter stays empty it doesn't it doesn't go on there but if I come back to my main layer here and if I add that filter height to normal it does this and now there, there are some sliders and you can adjust this but this is going to help convert the height to normal now it hasn't done anything yet what we need to do now and you can experiment with these values is we're going to actually export this so I've created a name for this brick height to normal video and I'm going to export I'm going to export the texture so I'm going to choose my uh, PBR metallic roughness and I've got this all set up and I want to be using OpenGL because I use use blender so this is set up choose my PBR metallic roughness and choose a place to put this so I've chosen a folder and I'm just going to export all right brick height to normal base color roughness it's the normal that we care about now let's have a look at that you can see that the normal has what appears to be some bricks some some texture to that normal all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring in that normal i'm going to import that normal so just grab that open that set it as a texture to the current session so there it is and over here where I have the normal map that was baked originally I'm going to drag that over and put that there now at that point I really don't even need uh, the height from here anymore see if I if I turn that off okay I'm just adding to it and there's nothing wrong with that we could try that what I'm going to do next is I'm going to bake the mesh maps but I'm not going to bake the normal all right, so and this is going to influence the rest of the maps. So I'm just going to bake it say, at the same values as we had before. And now that's baked in. Now if I come back here, if I add that height, I can do that. And that looks pretty cool, actually. And we have some normal information in there. Now what we really want to do is we, I don't need that that filter anymore now I'm going to add a fill layer I'm going to use maybe just color let's try it with just color all right I'm going to add a black mask and a generator and I'm going to try this curvature and watch what happens see the way it's going around the edges we could not do that previously and so at this point you can then tame that if you want and you start to get some highlight which can be tweaked in terms of its color perhaps you know maybe maybe that works better for you or or whatever if you want to go crazy you could put you know you can do whatever but now we have access to 
those edges because of what we have done. All right, and from then you can go and add moss, you can add dirt, you can do all kinds of things. The main thing is to get those edges. And you can do this with anything. You can you can take other alphas, you know, any of these kind of things, and you can put it on your model. And then you can use that filter that we put on here. All right, you can use that filter and then do the process that I just showed you where you export, drag the normal back in, bake the mesh maps, but don't bake the normal again. Don't bake over the normal. You want to keep that. And now you can do that kind of thing. So I just thought that would be useful to know. It's a little bit long of a process, but it, it's it's the older kind of way to do things. And it's used all the time to get your alphas or normals uh, into uh, a usable form where you can have smart materials interact and you can do edgeware and stuff like that. All right. So hopefully that helps. Thanks for watching and see you next time.